Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Music Broadcast Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashit Kukin, CEO, Music Broadcast Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the Q1 FY23 earnings call for Music Broadcast Limited. Joining me on the call is Mr. Rajiv Shah from our IR team and our investor relations partner, Strategic Growth Advisors. It gives me great pleasure to talk to you again in times where the country has been fully opened up and the pandemic seems to have trailed off. To substantiate my point, as per industry research reports, advertising volumes recorded a 5.7 times growth in May 2022 year on year. The tally of categories has increased by 51% while the count of advertisers and brands has increased 3x. This brings back the much needed optimism that many industries, including ours, have been wishing for the past few quarters. Radicalization, as I explained over the last two quarters, is driving the next lever of growth with radio at its core. Using the fundamental resources at hand and combining it with the advantages, reach, and customization of digital to reach a far greater audience provides better and targeted content and in some cases even opening up markets which previously didn't exist. By enabling RJs to produce text, audio and video material, RJs with a strong social media presence also engage with their audience more effectively. Additionally, RJs have grown to be powerful influencers which aids broadcasters in generating revenue. The volume rebounds serves as a more evidence of this. Talking about client counts and market share, Radio City has continued to maintain a lion's share of 38% of the total clients. From an industry perspective, 2.24 thousand clients are new in, F in Q1 FY23 out of the total 4.05 clients who advertise on the radio platform. With the festive period coming and pandemic pulling off across the globe, leading to free mobility and the resumption of outdoor events. The upcoming quarter looks promising and will boost our record recovery as guided earlier. Our market share has stood strong over the time and we existed the previous year with a 21% market share. This, at the end of Q1, stands at 18% owing to refusal of certain low ER clients which is in alignment with what we have always maintained that we, are, we aren't playing the volume game. And while this result in a dip this quarter as far as volume is concerned, but we believe that this will help us having a greater value share owing to the higher pricing. Coming to the sectoral ad spend, we observed a phenomenal growth in major sectors which elevate on a lower base. Signals strong recoveries and great prospects moving ahead. Real estate which contributes 17% to the industry grew by 389% year on year. While pharma which contributes 11% grew by 139% year on year basis. A staggering growth was observed in the electrical, auto, food and soft drink segments as well. With these core category sectors growing by 319, 319, 115 and 30% respectively and contributing 7, 6 and 6 percentage of volume respectively to the industry. Over the past few quarters, the negative trend observed in the government sectors was overturned with this sector growing 47% and contributing 6% to the industry. Approximately 14.75 crores of the top line, or 34% of it, came from new revenue opportunities. Our internal focus predict that these revenues will continue to increase as well. A few lasting cost reductions have been achieved by deliberately optimizing efforts, yield, significant benefits that are expected to continue for the foreseeable future. On the collection front, the company has managed to collect rupees 51.73 crores during the quarter, of which the collection from government stands at rupees 4.89 crores. 
these efforts on the recovery of revenues have led to the NOD further reducing from 164 days to 135 days. Coming to the financial performance of the quarter gone by, we registered a growth of 116% year on year, increasing our top line from Rs. 20.5 crores to Rs. 44.1 crores. Our EBITDA has turned a leap from being a negative Rs. 9.3 crores in Q1 of FY22 to turning to a positive 8.8 .8 crores in the Q1 of FY23. This translates to healthy EBITDA margins as well of 19.8% in the current quarter as against uh, a negative 45.5% in the same quarter last year and 13.3% in the Q4 uh, of FY22. This turnaround is a result of a combination of factors including realized operating leveraged advantages, internal cost efficiencies initiatives and returned advertising expenditures. We have always placed high emphasis on a maintaining a healthy balance sheet as seen by the sizable reserves we have, ever, we, we have available. As of 30th June 2022, our cash reserves were rupees 273 crores up from rupees 264 crores on the 31st of March 2022, demonstrating our li a good liquidity position. These sources offer the tools needed to take advantage of current and potential future possibilities. Building on several budgets from the previous few quarters, digital in integrations have evolved into our core pillars. Our social media presence is significant. Across all platforms, we reach about 245 million people. We provide a wide range of digital solutions that give our clients omni-channel, end-to-end solutions for their products and services. The so sum of all of these factors increase our digital revenue for the quarter by 169%. Lastly, with regards to the bonus issue of the non-convertible, non-cumulative, redeemable preference shares, the meeting of the equity shareholders and unsecured creditors of the company was held on Thursday, June 23, 2022, wherein the shareholders and the unsecured creditors have approved the scheme and thereafter the company has filed the petition with the NCLT for further course of action. We will keep you posted on the developments as they unfold. With this, I would request the moderator to open up the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nisha Desai from NM Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for, for the opportunity uh, and congratulations on your numbers. My, I have a couple of questions. First question is, uh, we have been seeing record attrition levels in the other industries over the past year and um, the major wage escalation to retain the talent. So we have observed that the Radio City does a great job at retaining its talent. Uh, are you seeing any shift in that trend or any churn in the, in the talent pool? See, uh, as far as uh, any competitive business, the risk of good people uh, leaving will always be there. But I think the way we have worked at Radio City is we have built up a culture which transcends uh, uh, a few requirements for an employee perspective. I think uh, a couple of instances that I would proudly want to talk about. We've all seen uh, how different industries have reacted in the last two years of COVID uh, and how they have kind of treated employees. Uh, I can proudly say that in the last two years of COVID, we have not asked a single person to go. That's the first sign of, you know, dependability that the employees have on an organization during difficult times. Secondly, with all uh, things given within the perspectives of the business that we have had, we have not even cut salaries of people because we all know how dependent uh, a large part of India, Indian employees are as far as salaries are concerned. I think these are the saving uh, uh, facts that really prove the, uh, the, the, the company's, uh, you know, 
ability to kind of keep their people happy. So uh, we have always seen attrition obviously come from the fact that there is a certain level of unhappiness the employees ask from the organization and then obviously they start looking out and then possibly they go to the best buyer out. But I think in, uh, that part of our challenge is not there. Having said that, you know, the ability of this organization to grow from its current uh, uh, position to larger things, which is also a growth opportunity from individual perspective is what I think a large part of our employees see because this whole transition and the transformation that we are talking about from being uh, uh, not just a radio medium but in multiple uh, channels and platforms and and an opportunity that is there. I think that's a larger bet for us why people find it happier to kind of continue with the brand Radio City and hence possibly our attrition is lower than the industry standard. Okay, uh, thank you for that. was very helpful. My second question is, I just wanted to check on the status of uh, on-ground events. Are we doing a large number of on-ground events? And when can we expect to get to pre-COVID level? Also, have the unit economics with respect to such events changed post-COVID with uh, additional safety measures? Lower crowds or are they still a worthwhile exercise? So, uh, honestly, the additional safety measures for the kind of events that we do will not lower down the margins for sure because that's a very small component, number one. Uh, answering your first question, as our events uh, let solutions integrated uh, with radio in, on the increase? Yes, it is. As the market is opening up, uh, we are doing a lot of events and as we go forward from here in the subsequent quarters, you will see a lot of that happening because when there is no restraint in the market to kind of do events, uh, you know, more and more people want that experiential feel when it comes to on-ground led uh, uh, integrated led advertising solutions. So, to, so we are positive that is going to increase and you will see that also increasing in our team of things from a revenue perspective. Uh, hello? Uh, yeah. Does that answer your question or you have some Yeah, more? yeah, sir. Thank you, sir. That was really very good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity, and I hope I'm audible. Uh, just first question on the market share. It seems that for the last two quarters, we are uh, giving up some market share. So if you can elaborate if our strategy has changed and we are focused more on pricing. So, you know, uh, like I said, you know, we are very clear. Uh, like the first point I made in my statement is that, you know, in the Q1 of this year, we have possibly seen the highest radio volume in the last five years or so. So the, while the volumes are there, I think the only way to increase revenues will now be the, uh, uh, the, the yield or the ERs that you have. Uh, to give you the reflection of the last two quarters of so-called uh, losing of shares vis-a-vis -vis revenue growth. So while I would not want to uh, uh, name the competitor, but if you closely look at some of our competitors, there is clearly a, over a period of time, uh, one of our close competitors have added two percentage points as far as share is concerned. And when you look at the growth, we have doubled the growth of that particular uh, uh, competitor. So the, the point out here is that if there is a 2% share volume change, obviously your growth should be more than somebody who has actually dropped a percentage share point, right? Conceptually, all things remaining the same. But the story is different. We have doubled the growth of what uh, on an annualized basis that we have. Even if I talk about the last quarter, with an increase of 1% point and our 1% point drop, uh, as against the zero increase, we have shown an 8% growth. So to me, uh, it's a clear story of getting the best value uh, uh, revenue on board rather than going for everything that is available because that's not a long-term strategy because we all know that inventory at some point in time is, is, is uh, only that much. You, you can't go beyond that. So it's only revenue uh, gets given by, by the effective rate. And that is something which we started in the last of the uh, last quarter last year, and we are continuing that strategy. And as you see our results, you will see that there is an uh, increase in our uh, effective rate uh, from the exit. That, that, to my mind, is our strategy, and it works well for us. That's, that's helpful. So are you saying that you are um, back to the pre-COVID levels in terms of volumes, or uh, how should one think about that? If you look at the Q1 uh, overall volume, 
it is back to the pre-COVID level. However, the mix of volumes is still uh, not the same because in the pre-COVID level there was a larger contributor contribution coming from Bombay, Delhi, and Bangalore, and uh, that contribution is still not to the pre-COVID levels. Now, when I am specifically mentioning Bombay, Delhi, and Bangalore, those are the highest yield market for all radio stations, not just for Radio City. So the moment that yield will be added whenever that full recovery of that volume happens. It's today still at a 65-70% of, of volume uh, utilization, which has the ability to go right up till 95 to 100, if one doesn't go overboard more than that, you know. So that's the ability straight away there to, uh, from a revenue gain perspective. Okay. And uh, that's, that's again quite helpful. Uh, my other question was that on the non-radio business, so it is becoming now a reasonably bigger size of the uh, revenue pie. Uh, what is the EBITDA margin on that business vis-a-vis -vis the radio business? See, uh, uh, all uh, for us uh, as, a, as a thumb rule, any business which is non-radio, our, 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 our understanding is very clear that it should be a greater delta uh, booster, whether it is EBITDA or PAT as far as the business is concerned. And hence, I can probably say that it is a much better uh, margin than the core radio business that we talk about. I see. And then this last question, um, you know, since the Q1 of last year was obviously COVID impacted. So if I look at your uh, following three quarters EBITDA margin, it was around 25% uh, versus we have done around 20% this quarter. So if that is because of seasonality or um, you you had higher cost, if you can just so it's just seasonality because you know, even in the last you know uh, investor call meeting, I said you know typically uh, there is a 15 percent drop uh, that happens of, uh, from the Q4 to Q1, and then you have a uh, you know marginal drop in Q2, and then it picks up in Q3 and Q4. So historically, Q3 is the highest quarter, followed by uh, Q4, then Q2, and then Q1. So that's the way it follows. And I think that is a pattern that we are also seeing right now. So there is not uh, any great cost. The only marginal incremental cost you will see is, is the digital part of the cost uh, in keeping in line of the future requirements of this organization. Having said that, even with that increased cost of digital, the margins in that part of the business is more than the regular business that we can talk about. Okay. And then just lastly, on the government side, uh, it, if you have any comments on that uh, vertical, uh, because your competitor was uh, saying that uh, you know the government is uh, business is still weak, so I was just wondering what are you guys seeing in that vertical? Uh, the government business is slightly picking up because now with the state governments, uh, whenever there is a state government, the state government will start advertising. As we come closer to the 2024, so the last quarter, you may find the government now taking a. Uh, posture of advertising to create, uh, you know, the, the good effect of whatever uh, they have done in the past four, 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 three and a half, four years. So that is what will happen at the second end from the uh, central government is concerned. State government is, uh, is, is advertising and state government will go higher in the market where there is elections happening. And also the tourism without with this pand uh, pandemic and all, uh, you know, opening up, you will see a lot of India local tourism as coming from the from the government so that that is something which we are looking forward to great thank you that's all i had appreciate it thanks rajesh thank you the next question is from the line of virat shah from shah investments please go ahead hi sir i have a couple of questions yes virat the first question is can you help me with the capital uh, capacity utilization figures of legacy batch 1 and batch 2 station for FY22. Sorry, sorry, come again. Can you help me with capacity utilization figures of legacy batch 1 and batch 2 stations for FY22? Yeah. So, uh, can you be a little louder, please? Uh, you're, you're cracking. Hello, am I able? Yeah, yes, yes. Sir, can you help me with the capacity utilization figures of legacy batch 1 and legacy batch 2? Stations for FY22. See, the legacy batch ones are all at about 65% utilization level, and the legacy two is also approximately at about 62, 60% uh, uh, utilization level. The batch three is about a 45% utilization level as of now. Okay. 
and sir uh, concerning about the cash and cash equivalents on our uh, uh, books we have been observing the growth of uh, growth in every quarter have we aimed uh, to uh, deploy the cash whether in inorganic or uh, acquisitions or expansion in number of radio stations or any other in uh, initiatives see like you know uh, uh, any expansion of uh, uh, currently uh, like we said every opportunity is weighed uh, at the time when we feel that there is an opportunity that we need to invest on currently as we uh, speak uh, there is no nothing that i can foresee immediately however having said that as our uh, whole digital ploy gets increased and our whole play gets increased wherever there is an opportunity we will uh, uh, you know deploy that keeping the larger interest of the organization and the stake of shareholders to ensure that there is a great profitability for the existence of brand radio city as we go forward okay and what are the current initiatives uh, that are giving us a good roi if you could provide an update on that yeah so you know for us you know apart from the fact that uh, there is a plain vanilla advertising that the media always gets what we as radio city has always tried on is is this whole created business as we call or solutions that we provide to advertisers which is you know straddling multiple medium so today a lot of our success is coming with the integrated solutions that we give to clients you know while you know i it, it's a much to uh, cliche term which i keep saying that the consumer is no more linear and i keep telling this in every investor call is that as the consumer is becoming hybrid we are very clear that we will want to reach out to our brand consumers in whichever platform the brand consumer is uh, you know consuming content whether it is social media platforms or 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 streaming platforms or on ground or radio so our solutions are all multiple uh, platform led solution and that is giving us um, huge uh, results because that's how our integrated solutions happen i have always told that you know radio city has always uh, had this faith in itself saying that we are great storytellers and our creative content selling is is among the best in the business and that's why our our, our creative team morality is known as the best creative uh, hot shop as far as radio advertising is concerned and now beyond radio into even digital advertising so that's the way we look at it so for that that combination of uh, knowing the pulse of what consumers want from a content perspective is what we believe we do best that's the first part the second part is where very clearly as the world moves itself towards uh social media influencers we have a depository of large influencers in the form of our rjs which we are effectively using for brand to make those communications with their set of audiences so it's a combination of all this and lastly like i said this whole need to have experiential feels for brands when you go on ground we believe uh, you know the kind of uh, following our our our, follow, our rjs have we been able to engage with consumers on ground with specific events which is one more opportunity that uh, a brand see to associate with us and all this in combination is where the results are coming from yes it was helpful and sir uh, as sdk season is coming up uh, have we any have we planned any initiatives which are yet to launch there is a lot of things see uh, keeping in mind the seasonality we do a lot of events like you know uh, during ganesh chaturthi we have customized ganesha events specific to specific regions in bombay we have something in ganesha down south we have something in ganesha with navratri coming in we have the garma premier league the garba premier league that we do so there is a whole lot of festive led uh, on ground led on air led initiatives that we do year on year and we also do a lot of localized events which allows brands to kind of interface with their uh, with their consumers so so that that's something which is and we follow a set calendar for ourselves you know so that we don't struggle at the last moment to try and put things in place so right in the beginning of the year we know what are the uh, you know major festivals coming because you know in india they say that you know when the mood is celebratory the consumption increases you know that's the typical uh, mindset and we try to ride on those uh, celebratory moments of the consumers Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gurjot Alwalia, an individual investor. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Hi, this is my first. Yeah. So, first question is around the seasonality you mentioned in the business. So, please help me sort of understand how this works. So, I'm just looking at the company's uh, pre COVID revenue. So, the Q1 FY18, okay, this is four years back, revenue was 70 crore. The FY19, again, Q1 revenue was 76 crore. The FY20, Q1 revenue was 70 crore, okay. And the Q3 FY20 revenue, which you are saying is the best quarter typically, was also 70 crore. Okay, so there was no difference in the FY20 Q1 and Q3 revenue. Now, Q3 of last year, the company did 60 crore, which I thought the company is coming back to normal. But now the past couple of quarters, again, the revenue has dipped to about 45 odd crores. And if I'm looking at historical Q1 numbers, this is around 70, 75 crore, as I just said. So I don't understand how the seasonality of the business is currently working has suddenly come in. And this was a completely normal quarter this year, uh, FI23 Q1. So, yeah, if you could sort of explain how this is working and how we should understand the business. So, so the, you know, uh, I'll, I'll refer to Q3 of, uh, of, 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 of uh, FI20 uh, being lower than Q1 of FI20. Is that what you said? No, I am saying that Q1 FI20 was 70. 70 crore and Q3 FY20 was also 70 crore. So both of them had very similar revenue. Correct. Correct. I don't Correct. think there's seasonality in Q1 and Q3. Yeah, that is, that is, that is. So uh, uh, I'll answer that question. You know that there was some kind of a small economic slowdown uh, in, in, in FY20 and that is seen across industry. So you can see uh, right in the middle of the year, which is in the second end of second quarter, we have seen that uh, slowdown happening in FY20. And uh, Hence, you will see that the revenues of the overall year was also lesser than the previous year in that sense. That is because there was some kind of a slowdown which has come into the economy and that was what started with Q3, got affected in Q4 and then the rest you know we all have seen the numbers because then the COVID uh, situation started. Typically, for any business, especially in media, like I said, the highest spends always happen in Q3 because this is the uh, quarter value of the maximum festival. Okay, some change in the pure uh, in the overall advertising has been affected with the IPL play because IPL has seems to be a large in uh, you know uh, revenue. And now I'm not generally talking media. I'll come to radio later on because of the huge investments that happens for brands on IPL. So that at times have, may have skewed Q1 from the so-called erstwhile spends that has happened. But if you look at a thumb rule across industries, across media, when I say across industries, across media, you'll have Q3 being the highest, followed by Q4, followed by Q2, and then Q1. And that, if you see over a period of 8-9 years, you'll see that consistently, aberrations of years where there is an economic slowdown, or if you refer to a 2008 uh, recession period, you'll have this you know, uh, anomalies in the quarter-wise quarter numbers and that to my mind is not the benchmarking. Secondly, to answer your question of a 70 crore average quarter, yes, that, that's the point that they're saying. You know, if I look at my figures in the Q1 of last FY20, I was at a 66 crore crores. Now 70 would be, if you're adding uh, uh, other income into it, it will be our 70, 71 crores. But typically, uh, that has, is, is at 44 crores right now, very clearly because of, I'm still operating at the 70% yield of my pre-COVID numbers. And that is why uh, I personally believe that any change to get closer to your pre-COVID numbers will be largely driven by a revenue strategy through your pricing rather than a volume strategy because at some point the volume will get stagnated. Okay. Um, so, so this is what I'm trying to understand that Q3 we seem to be getting a much right back to normal uh, Q3 last year, but again now we are seeing 45 crore average run rate, which is uh, way lower, at least a, a good 40 percent or lower than the previous few pre pre COVID revenues earlier. So, are we going to attain that run rate anytime in the next couple of years, or that's still a long way? So that 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 is a very difficult issue. Now I will need to have a. Uh, 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 future uh, understanding beyond uh, which at this point in time it will be difficult to credit. Having said that, I am very clear that 
there are two points I will make in this communication of yours, which is one is uh, uh, how close are you going to get to the top line numbers of pre-COVID? Your company has always been chasing the bottom line and you always know that we have never been a top line driven company, we have always been a bottom line driven company. If you ask me a question, I am more comfortable to say that you will see the, the bottom line or the PPT numbers that we saw pre-COVID in the next four to five quarters rather than the top line numbers because top line numbers uh, is today a little colored because of the uh, discounting uh, offer that is happening in the market from a volume perspective. And I, I've given you a couple of examples of that. So I would look at, you know, reaching out to my uh, pre-COVID numbers, PBT, much, much earlier than reaching the top line numbers because like you know, over a period of time we have, been, we have uh, gotten cost measures which is working well for us and the business which we are banking, which is beyond radio, like I told you, are better EBITDA boosters or uh, bottom line boosters than the traditional business of radio. So my strategy is very clear. Do my best as far as radio is concerned and get to the maximum that I can do through a pricing and volume strategy. The new businesses or opportunities that we create through on-ground, through social media, through digital, which is a larger uh, uh, delta booster as far as my bottom line is concerned, and get far closer to the pre-COVID numbers and beyond the point not really be too carried away with the top line numbers because that can some, at times be misleading. That's, a, that's my strategy and I think in a way we are closely you know, uh, in line with what, what that strategy is. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's very helpful. Thanks for that guidance. Um, this second question is overall on the radio industry growth rate. I don't see any slides that you share around this. So if you can sort of share the overall market size and how fast or slow the industry is growing, I want to understand if there is any natural growth in this industry or is it, is it just a fight for market share uh, right now? So. If you could also create some slides in the presentation, that would be helpful, and if you can share some color on the industry growth rate. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk of the pure radio growth. I mean, when I'm saying pure radio growth, I'm not talking about uh, the uh, initiatives that we do beyond conventional FCT advertising, which is your integrated solution and advertising funded programming, the on-ground led avenues, uh, and the digital as separate. I still believe that the core radio in isolation will still grow by about 12 to 14 percent. However, most radio players are today looking at themselves as not just radio. You know, we are radio, we are, we are radio, we are on-ground solution providers, we are on digital solution providers and we are also providers of syndicated content. Now that part of the business, I mean I can proudly say that you will see at least a 25, 30, 25 to 30% on an average CAGR growth for the next 4 to 5 years. That's the first part. On what basis I'm saying that because when we are talking about this whole integrated solution which has a lot of influencer led marketing led uh, brand communication that is happening, that space already is more than what the radio space is. The radio space is about 2000 plus odd crores. That space of only influencer led marketing is about 4500 crores. So the opportunity is double of what radio is. And we should look at our opportunity as not just the 2,000 crores of radio, it is actually 600,000 crores of radio plus digital. And if I have to throw in the, uh, the events part of the business in which we operate as, as an industry, I think we are already chasing 9,000 crores of business. So it is no more a share of what seven, eight years back of radio being just a share of the radio business, I think all radio players are looking at the share of the multiplicity of these opportunities, which is in its own four times more than what the radio opportunity is. Okay. So, with the core radio market in itself is around 2,000 crores, and you believe that also is growing 12% plus, percent plus? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So, yeah, if there is some, some material that can be created for investor presentation. That will really help uh, build the confidence. It'll take it in the system. Yeah. And just one last point uh, on the NCRPS. Uh, what are the next steps and tentative timeline? Since you know, right, it's almost two years since you announced this, and uh, something shareholders are looking forward to. I think the major part of the hurdle is, uh, is it's over with all being accepted. The shareholders accepted. Now it is as, as, as long the procedure takes place, 
because then from our perspective there is no urgency at this point in time because all that needed to be clear clear from our side and from the shareholder perspective everything has been done now it's just a matter of time as far as the procedural time that takes and uh, that un unfortunately i can't give you any uh, any uh, any uh, indication of when it will happen but we believe you know the, the current set of people are uh, from the government perspective or 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 people who are uh, involved in this are are fairly efficient and we should see soon something coming out of this okay any tentative timeline 3 months 6 months Honestly speaking, you know, I would love to say it is it is six months, but uh, you know, uh, it, it's dependable uh, of as and when it happens. Up, we we have a strong feeling it will be earlier, but you know, like I said, it's just a speculation from our side. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Khanna from Banyan Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know if I have missed this before. What are the uh, debt levels uh, for you in this quarter? Rent? Zero debt. We are a debt-free company. But uh, I can I can see some sort of a uh, you know finance cost uh, on the P&L. So what exactly is that then uh, that you might be incurring? This is the finance cost relating to the leases we take off for the our. All stations. Okay, that that basically the primarily the lease lease expenses. Lease, yes, it's Got it. No, understood, sir. So, uh, sir, uh, another question was regarding the yields. You just uh, said in one of the answers that we are still operating at seventy percent yield versus pre-COVID, and that is one of the reasons uh, you know your revenue um, is is down compared to pre-COVID. However, you would uh you would uh, see the profitability coming back at the pbt levels uh which is compared to the pre covid so what exactly would be the drivers according to you when you say that uh yields might be lower than pre covid but we would be uh, on the pbt level uh touching pre covid levels two three reasons one reason is like we said you know uh, uh we have done a lot of cost measures uh which 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 obviously will reflect in the bottom line number one number two like i said as far as our pricing strategy is concerned we are looking at marginal movements from what we were in the last one and a half two years as far as uh, uh, our, our our yields are concerned and that is gradually seen you know even in this quarter we have grown by about 14% in our yields so you know we are looking at that increase secondly like i said the mix of our business is also now getting added on with the Uh, element which is beyond radio and that is the digital part of the business the on ground led solutions which is come back post covid and like i said all these businesses for us are higher margins than the conventional radio business because in the radio business there is possibly a lot of competition and it is just a share game beyond that you know that only that much you can do but in these forms of the business where there is a lot of expertise and uh, you know uh, of the the, uh, the ability to kind of uh differentiate ourselves in in the kind of solutions you give for the advertiser to pay you a premium i think that's what the game plan is and a combination of all these three plus whatever gain that remains to be done in the volume part of the business which was missing that also will be adding on to the overall revenues and as you know we are a fixed cost business after a particular point whatever you do on top line straight away goes down you know so that that's the right. reason why one seems reasonably sure that we should be hitting those numbers Fair enough. So, sir, one 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 additional point, if I can squeeze in here, you mentioned that the legacy batch one uh, stations, or uh, I I believe those are uh, the high yielding stations of Mumbai, Delhi, and Bangalore, are still at 65 percent operating capacity utilization. So, any particular reason for these markets to be operating still much below pre-COVID levels, and 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 what is your sense? These markets coming back. Yeah. So, I, I you know uh, typically for Bombay and Delhi, I think. Uh, uh whatever little residual effect of covid and little scares that had happened in the month of april and may with whatever that new variant is it also had affected because it's a mix of local plus corporate advertisers that uh, had uh, we have as a mixture right so that was the reason why we believe that that challenge is still existing but now that in the last two and a one and a half months i think 
slowly that is beyond us because life has come back to normal. So yes, uh, uh, the metro market, especially Bombay, Delhi, and Bangalore, unfortunately had this whole little uh, uh, you know uh, uh, bias towards the COVID being affected because of whatever those numbers were reflecting in our overall scheme of things for the industry and not just the thing, and that is reflected in the overall radio volume. My, if you, the, my next question, uh, the next answer to this uh, thing is, I think, already we are seeing signs of improvement happening. Because life is coming back to normal and now the festive kicking in, we believe it should get back to, at least, you know, if I have to take a risk of putting up the number, anywhere between a 75 to 80 percent bare minimum utilization level. Yeah? And, and, and from there on, you know, uh, at the peak, we, we touch 95, 90, 95 percent. Fair enough, sir. So, so, like I said, the ER is any which is going to be simultaneously being pushed up so that there will be a combination of the increased volume through this in, uh, extra utilization of the uh, uh, inventory and that marginal push that we are getting through the ER will be the net gain that you see quarter on quarter. Right. So, so in that in that scenario, uh, see, in the fourth quarter, we did around 4% operating EBITDA margins. And right now we are at 9.5 percent. So will it be will it be a fair assumption on the analyst community side and the investor side to assume around 15 uh, percent of EBITDA margins in the, in the second half of this year? You know, I wish I could give you a, an answer to this, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, our, our attempt is to do uh, what we are uh, you know showing as an efficient matter, uh, matter from our side. But I think uh, I would rather want to take you all to kind of look at it from a perspective of that so far things are played as per the kind of strategic direction we are taking and should uh, uh, possibly believe that we should be able to deliver what we are talking about in terms of the overall margin. Uh, so, so, uh, so, I mean, I understand you don't give guidance. So does it, I mean, I'm only asking if the number looks reasonable to you or not. That's it. See, uh, I, let me answer this question a little differently without really committing myself to something because I, I, it will be just one statement from my side. I see an upside of my volumes, uh, the revenues going quarter on quarter from now on. And I have already made my statement saying that all uh, once the critical costs are taken care of, any incremental revenue will straight away go down. I mean, that's the thumb for us, you know. And we believe at this quarter's level of, uh, of, of uh, revenues, uh, we are a break-even. Any increase that you will see, to whatever extent, 6, 7, 5, everything quarter on quarter will go down. And, and that will improve our margin in any case, you know. So that's the way you Fair want enough. to look at it. Fair enough. That was very helpful, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipti Kothari from Kothari Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So Good my up. first question, uh, my first question was that uh, we ended the previous financial year at a strong market share of 21%. However, that has fallen to 18% in the current quarter. So just wanted to understand the reason for this fall and if there are any changes in strategies to recover the lost ground. No, there is no lost ground, you know, in fact, uh, in the earlier question also I mentioned that we believe that, you know, for, uh, for any uh, 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 business where you have a limited uh, utilization, a limited inventory and a long-term plan, you need to look at it from a perspective of, uh, of, of what is the kind of revenues you will look at. So I'll just give you a you know, back of the envelope calculation which, which, which we, you know, we have those recorded volumes happening. Imagine I wouldn't have taken any rate hike for the quarter of uh, uh, quarter one of, of this year and I would have gone with the same share of 21% that I had, I would have still done 2 and a half crores lesser than what I have done. So for us the strategy is very clear, it's pricing driven and it's a strategic call that we have taken to ensure that we believe in the long run, uh, we should have a higher revenue share rather than having a higher volume share. I already gave you examples of one of my competitors, and I can give you two examples of a share by, uh, volume share increasing by 2% but revenue growth half of what I have shown when I have not actually increased the volume uh, share. And I was at a 21% exit, I, I was 21% last year, but I showed a double the growth of somebody who added 2% starting from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So that to my mind uh, 
uh, is, is where the strategy gap is. We believe that uh, because of the kind of stations that we have, and maybe that is because we have a larger share of uh, fairly more advertising attractive markets vis-a-vis -vis any of the others. Because if you see our mix of revenues coming from the advertising attractive market, as we call, where advertisers believe that they have to be present in a large scale, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the tail end of volumes and markets that we are, we are able to justify that far more and it is showing in our results uh, not just in one quarter but in the annual growth that we talk about also. And as you all know, we don't have a long tail. Yes, okay. And sir, the EBITDA margins have improved from 13% to almost 20% in this quarter. So will this margin be improved even further going ahead or do we see some headwinds in the near to midterm uh, denting the margin? See, see, we would want to do the best as far as margins are concerned. But as I said, in our exploratory uh, part of the business where we are looking at a lot of digital future for the company, there could be times that we would possibly want to invest more in the short term and get far more in the long term. Those are the days or times where you may not see that matching, but that is as and when, like I said, you know, uh, we will, it will, it will follow the priorities of the organization as far as the business is concerned. Okay. And if you want to call, it will, it will, it will be by design and not by default. Okay. And sir, uh, while looking through your presentation, it was heartening to see the return of ad, ad spends and all the major sectors growing significantly in volume. So, which sectors in your opinion are expected to sustain this growth in the upcoming quarter? I think all the most major sectors that you have seen, whether it is, uh, uh, you know, real estate, whether it is uh, pharma, food and soft drinks, all those sectors will be sustaining because that, that, those are the sectors where any which is uh, not just in our medium but also in other mediums advertising. So I don't see any sector falling out. In fact, starting the end of second quarter, I also see finance which is currently missing will be back in the foray which will also add on to the overall volumes. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Apurva Mehta from AM Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just uh, wanted to know this, uh, uh, you know, created businesses which we are reporting of 14.8 crores and, you know, roughly that is around 35, 33, 34% of our uh, revenue. Yes. So, you know, going forward, uh, you know, what can this be created business, you know, grow and how can we grow the business and what is your assessment that can this become a 50% kind of business of your total revenue? See, we, uh, in our overall strategy, we, we, we are chasing the 50-60% per, percent growth on the created business because that is an opportunity that we create through pure creative solutions that you give, you know, and that includes digital solutions that we are talking about. So, if you see our presentation, we have grown by about almost close to 170% on, 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 on our uh, digital part of the business, you know, which is again a creative solution because it is a, an idea-led created opportunity that we give in the platforms of the choice, which is the digital platform of the consumers. So, uh, uh, we are chasing heavy uh, numbers out there and you will only see that improving uh, as we go forward. But having said that, we also believe as the as well as the regular FCT business is concerned, or the plain vanilla business, which is as we said, which is at a 65% utilization level in Bombay Delhi and Bangalore, and overall overall utilization level at 55 to 60%. When that in, increases, this is the base you will see what the contribution is. But uh, so I, I can't really uh, you know kind of uh, tell you whether it's going to be 50% of what you are. From a, a size, from an absolute number, it will be growing quarter on quarter is what we believe. Because last three quarters, we were like flattish of you know, 14 and a half, 15 crores, 14 and a half, 15. Only Q3, we had a little better quarter where we had clocked 22 crores. So, you know, I thought this pie would be, you know, ballooning over the quarter on quarter every year. Yes, but, anyway, uh, because in Q3, and post Q3, the little part of on-ground solutions has started kicking in and, and our digital payout, uh, you know, started uh, going and giving more, because when the beginning of last year, when we started out, we created certain opportunities and we kind of built ourselves in the ecosystem also to create those great video content and so on and so forth. Now, as that gets built up and that, as you know, 
for us it is a large opportunity for us and that is really working for us and then that is where we believe that this will increase for sure you know what percentage i can't guarantee because i also am seeing the core of radio also simultaneously increasing so that is where the only catch for me not to able to kind of give you the percentage per se on on the yield front on the exit quarter of q4 uh, we should see this yield coming to 90% pre covid levels so roughly no no I, uh, like i told you it's pre covid level 70% yeah but on the exit q4 we know we will be increasing the ad rates definitely and what yes, you are guiding we have increased by about uh, 14 odd percent uh, in from q4 to from last q4 to now so okay. as we go forward the 90% see you know uh, uh, this whole uh, uh, rate game is is not just a one player game you you i am sure you understand yeah, that yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. i agree that yeah. you know for some strange reason uh, uh, someone who we always believed was as much premium as we were in the market there has suddenly shown a different strategy and that is not really helping the industry per se yeah, yeah. so having said that like i said to each his own strategy we will be gradually moving ourselves to a much fairly better price place player which we always were and ensure that that our margins through that strategy will be more than what we would conventionally do by just garnering up volumes in the market so your guidance of you know 40% kind of growth which was there you know uh, again last year roughly 35 40% if you stick to it or it will be now because q1 is softer so it will be difficult to reach to that kind of uh, uh, thing see uh, for us like i said you know our play uh, in the new forms of business is where we are taking the larger uh, growth you know 30 35% growth is what uh, one should uh, you know conventionally chase you know to be uh, having a sizable share of the business that we are and uh, and and given the uh, base of last, what last year it is so we are chasing aggressively uh, the business in that format okay 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 thanks a lot and yeah wish you all the best yeah. thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of omkar harkar from mirabilis investment trust please go ahead uh, yeah hi ashit this shrinivas uh, here from mirabilis hi, yeah hi yeah uh, ashit just wanted you uh, wanted uh, 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 to get more color on the Uh, utilization of the fairly solid cash reserve that we have, we have been collecting more than we earn. Uh, so broadly, at 270 crore kind of a, a balance sheet size, uh, what are the optionalities that are there? Because uh, last year the company was not able to declare dividend, I suppose, because of loss. But uh, broadly, and I understand the NCRPS will in some way. Uh, result in some cash being uh, kind of uh, set aside for that but broadly as a uh, management at board level uh, what are you looking at in terms of options for utilizing on the cash either in terms of say business acquisition or say some kind of a further return of uh, cash to the shareholders see like i told you you know a large part of our strategy is futuristic in terms of our deployment of a digital strategy that we have which is you know playing a larger Uh, role in this whole uh, influencer marketing space and the money and the uh, you know the opportunities lying out there. As we go forward uh, quarter on quarter and as we build our resources uh, in that part of the business, we will you know keep a close eye of opportunities which will help us uh, uh, scale uh, that that part of the business uh, uh, apart from the normal uh, you know growth that we are looking at. And that is one area we would be actively looking to kind of. see if there is any uh, investments required as far as the radio business is concerned i think we are already existing in the core at that advertising attractive market and because the digital part of the business is giving me a greater uh, uh, bottom line i would rather chase that card part of the business more than the core radio which i think we have got a substantial presence you know and 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 that is the way it is unless there is an opportunity which which tells us that even that play is available and we will play so like i said it's a it's a it's a decision that will come over a period of time as we progress ourselves and as we see the you know position improving from our overall uh, scheme of things and uh, hence uh, i think the best way to look at it is uh, 
you know, uh, little off of the uh, cup. I, I told you one of the uh, one of the biggest companies in India was looking at opportunities of investing outside the country in the business that they wanted to, but was advised to keep the money to save up internal competition. And I know you know who I'm talking about. So if they can think about keeping the money for themselves for a better time with the kind of cash reserves, I think I should be allowed that prudency to keep that cash for better time and invest it uh, uh, intelligently. Okay, okay. And uh, any any feedback uh, at a board level on how to look at the cash distribution to the shareholders? Because uh, I mean, I understand that at a TBT level we don't make much, but uh, but at least on a cash level we are making. I can only tell you one thing. You know, your company has always been looking at the interests of the investors always. Hmm. So, and whenever there is an opportunity, you know that you know in whatever little uh, opportunities were there, you are always more than happy to do that. Uh, I would only urge you to have faith that let things play out the way it is in a much better fashion that it is, and. And, and the board is mindful of this uh, need uh, that arises from the kind of uh, you know investments that you do and the faith that you show on us. And we would not want to let you down, but like I said, it will only come over a period of time for us to even give you any kind of an indication. Right. Uh, the second question is on the other expenses. Like this quarter, we have 22 crores versus say 24 to 25 crores in the last year. So is there any cost rationalization or... Uh, or are there more seasonal items which came in the second half of last year because of which it has dropped? So last year, what we did is, you know, uh, you know, if, if, if this question I answered last time also, you know, um, we've been kind of, uh, you know, very clearly looking at our debtors and uh, to ensure that there is, you know, we we don't veer away from the fact that that is the potential loss of uh, revenues not coming in because for whatever financial ability as some part of your debtors would be. We have increased uh, uh, in the last half of last year the provision for doubtful debt. And that possibly is reflecting in the uh, in our PML. Okay. Uh, and, and just to kind of uh, close the loop on that, uh, what are our like old uh, debtors, especially I think government accounts had a lot of uh, pending dues. Broadly, how has that old bucket trended for you in the uh, say See, the government has been a little slow, but our commercial uh, accounts are really well in control. So we uh, we we see no reasons uh, from a commercial perspective of hey, having any challenges. However, the government uh, is a little slow, but traditionally and historically, government uh, even if it is over a period of time has never been uh, bad, uh, you know, uh, debts for us, and we believe that is the way it's going to be for us. At this point of time, of the kind of pending uh, debtors. I think the last number we have is for the last quarter, that's 75, 76 crores. That would have come down, I suppose. So broadly of the current outstanding debtors, which could be the slow moving type of... Now, yeah. 70, okay. And any in that, within that, any major uh, slow moving debtors which are yet to be provided for? No. Uh, if you see, you know, even in this quarter we have provided, but as we go forward, uh, we have a process in which we see uh, uh, if there is a provision needed, irrespective of, uh, of the PNL, we do provide that. And hence, if you see last year in the second half, we provided more when we did this whole analysis. So that is an exercise we do continuously, and we be, you uh, we can assure you that if there is a need, it will be provided for. Oh, great! Uh, thanks, Ashit. Uh, we wish you all the best. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Khanna from Bandian Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, just a follow-up um, on the category growth that you have uh, in the presentation. So what are the other growth uh, or the categories which haven't really grown as much and are sort of lagging? Um, and what is your sense when they are going to you know, come back on the growth trajectory? See, I, I personally believe, uh, uh, you know, like I said, finance is a category which will come back uh, in a big way uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the subsequent quarters. I also believe e-commerce and OTT platforms will will come up again and will be, you know, uh, advertising more. Uh, and that will come during the festive for sure reasons, obvious reasons. And, uh, you know, and the regular categories which is that uh, is, 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 is already uh, growing, you know, whether it is real estate, pharma. 
finance, which is which is a high yielding category for us, typically grows largely in the second half of uh, Q3 and Q4 is hugely dominated by finance. So those are the categories which is absolutely near absence, I can say. There are, uh, but they don't form in the top 10 at this point in time. So those are happier signs for them because these are the categories which invariably year on year, whether there is recession, whether there is economic slowdown, have had the face in the medium of radio and have been continuously advertising with the, with the medium. Right. And and uh, when and when we see real estate as a category, um, you know, or pharma as a category that has posted very strong volume growth, uh, do you are you also witnessing some sort of yield improvements in these categories? Now, see, for us, uh, you know, real estate is a category which is largely volume driven. Having said that, you know, there's a lot of corporates which has gone into the real estate category which values. Uh, of the brand and is willing to play the premium and you know name all the top whether it is Godrej, Mahindra, uh, you know all, all big uh, uh, corporates are into real estate and we are uh, and even the erstwhile big and if I have to go local someone like a prestige in Bangalore or or or, or, or a, a bigger uh, you know uh, uh, real estate agents in Delhi we are very clear that we only pick up people who are premium uh, from a property perspective and also from a pricing perspective because like I said that's the only reason why you will see that we are not blindly chasing volumes you know we are very prudent about what volumes so while the real estate industry will increase our volumes will be depending on the kind of clients that we are chasing if they become active and fortunately for us most of them are active with projects across the uh, country you know that is Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore and that's the happiest sign for us Fair enough. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Apurva Mehta from AM Investments. Please go ahead. Yes, I just you know, wanted to know, are we uh, you know, uh, trying to make more digital content and gain market share? And is there any possibility to have more uh, marketing people and gain, gaining market share. Uh, is it possible because we have a lot of cash in books and you know we can use some of this cash to create more business, which is long term beneficial to us. And and uh, you know now we we with the normalization has returned. There is no COVID and anything, so the the uh, the picture is more clear. So can we you know spend more and uh, generate more business kind of thing? See, you know, uh, I have answered this question in the past. You know, uh, the digital uh, world of digital business is worth 36,000 odd crores. And, you know, even if I take, and I have repeated this in the past, investors calls also, so, you know, 50% of that is your display, uh, you know, your classified display uh, kind of, and search uh, money. That leaves you with about 18,000 odd crores, which is structured between influencer marketing, bit, which is both influencer marketing and advertising funded video uh, along with that and, and content creation along with that. If your answer is to that, should I increase my digital inventory through the resources that I've got uh, and, 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 and have a larger share of advertising, I don't see the business driven by volume rather than the idea like solutions and impact that we create through the influencer marketing uh, platform that we are, we are talking about or the influencer marketing solutions that we are talking about. So I, at this point in time, we are not, and that's the reason why even when pure, people ask me about your radio, do you want to increase more opportunities in radio because unless and until I see there is great value coming from an overall scheme of things, I will not blindly go because there is an opportunity available. So to answer your question, uh, the resources are there. Yes, we are using it resourcefully as of now, but as we see the play increasing, you will see some logical investments happening which will give us 3x of what we are doing currently as far as that business is concerned. And purely when I'm saying that, it's the digital-led advertising business that we talk about. Okay. So when you see opportunity coming in, you will spend more money and that will generate more revenue. That, uh, that's yes, what? Yes, you know, you know, uh, you know it, it's all about short term investments for long term gains, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. 
ओके थैंक्स अ लॉट या विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू Ladies and gentlemen, we will take the last question from the line of VP Rajesh from Bandian Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks again. Uh, so, going back to your comment about saying that uh, you will be targeting your highest PBT uh, in the next four five quarters. Um, so, when I'm looking at your historical financials, March 19, you did a PBT of 95 and a half crores. Uh, so should we assume that let's say fiscal year 24 uh, you could be at something similar level uh, is that the right way to think about and interpret your comment i was talking about the 1920 which is a pre covid year for us because if you go earlier you know things were different there was a different ecosystem and so on and so forth between then and then and now there has been a sea change that has happened that is in terms of available inventory uh the overall scheme of things uh, the the sentiment the available opportunity from the world of advertising as far as consumer brands are concerned so i think it is logical to look at where we were pre covid as the immediate pre covid now the answer to your question is that you know do you want to see that kind of figure of course over a period of time you will see that that figure because that's what our overall game plan is but i would rather hit the first figure which is the pre covid 1920 figure more than the earlier year because it has many reasons why it was that you know and and that that i think uh, is now gone and over bit and i would want to possibly stitch the future with the aim that i should be as profitable i was in the year 18 19 and that's the whole game plan so so 18 uh, sorry i'm confused so march 20 you did about 29 crores of pvt Yeah, and in March 18, you did 75 crores. So you're saying your first target is to hit this 29-30 mark of uh, year end in March 20. That's, that's right? our uh, aspiration, and we would want to believe that the market will equally pan out, and we would want to have uh, competing uh, stations also be prudent in their uh, incentivizing the market in terms of what rates to operate. Because you know, it's 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 a competitive world. You know, if you see uh, you know. Uh, competition going left right and center discounting you can't just stand there and say that i want to push this overall scheme of things in terms of the er so that's the challenge that is only if that is there in our scheme of things right now no understood understood and all the best thank you so much for your uh, insightful comments throughout this call much appreciated thank you so much thank you so much thank you that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments Thank you everyone for joining us in this earnings call. The organization will undoubtedly continue to expand on the advancements made in the previous year. The knowledge gain and the resilience built up to strengthen our dominant position in the market, further streamline operations, create higher quality content using our incredible talent pool and utilize our wide network to help us achieve that. The presentation and results have already been posted to the company's website and stock exchanges. Please feel free to contact any of us or SGA if you have any more questions. Stay safe and take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Music Broadcast, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.